If you're looking to easily build, upgrade, and manage all your open telemetry collectors, then this episode is for you. Welcome to Is It Observable? The main objective of Is It Observable? is to provide tutorials on how to observe a given technology. Today's episode is part of the Kubernetes and Open Telemetry series, where we already covered several episodes. So the introduction to Open Telemetry, how to instrument your code, the value of the Open Telemetry operator, how to observe the Kubernetes cluster using the Open Telemetry collector, and in fact, way more. Today's episode, we will focus on an open source solution helping us to design, observe, update our open telemetry collectors. And I'm referring to Pipeline from ObserveIQ. Pipeline is the first solution utilizing the new protocol OPAM. If you enjoy today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. So let's see what you're going to learn out of this episode. We will start with an introduction reminding the current challenge when managing our open telemetry collectors. We will then describe the OPAMP protocol. We will, of course, describe the solution biplane. We will have an interview with the CEO of ObserveIQ, Mike Kelly. Last, as usual, we'll end with a tutorial. Like explained in the introduction to open telemetry and in the video explaining how to observe your Kubernetes cluster using open telemetry, the open telemetry collector is an optional component that helps us to manipulate our telemetry data. But what does that mean? Well, you can do tons of things. You can change the sampling decision, you can modify measurements by renaming metrics, adding labels, uh, dropping data, produce observability metrics on how much data you are currently processing. To be able to manipulate the open telemetry data, you will need to create an open telemetry collector pipeline where you will define the receivers, where to collect the data, in fact, the processors, how you want to manipulate your telemetry data, and last, the exporters, where you want to export the modified data. The collector can be deployed in various ways, but the pipeline will always be the main configuration file of the collector holding your collector pipeline. In bare metal environment, you will launch the collector by passing the configuration YAML file, and in Kubernetes, we will have several ways of deploying our collector using a traditional deployment or daemon set, but our collector pipeline will be stored in a config map. We can also deploy our collector using the open telemetry operator that could help us to deploy our collector in various ways. In a sidecar container, so our, our application container will send the telemetry data to the default exporter, which is localhost. We can also deploy it in a daemon set mode where each node will have a collector that will receive our telemetry data and export it to one or several observatory backends. When dealing with lots of telemetry data, we obviously don't want to rely on one single collector. We will then build probably a chain of collector mixing sidecar collectors and daemon set collectors. By doing this, we will do part of the processing locally with a sidecar and do the last mile transformation in the daemon set collectors. With such deployment, it would mean that we would have to manage several instances of our collectors with various pipelines. To be able to probably observe our environments, we would need to make sure that our collectors are running smoothly and healthy. So you can do this, of course, manually, by relying on a Prometheus exporter like CubeSet Metrics, and also with metrics provided by the collector with a processor like SpanMetrics or the extension ZPage. But it means 
that you will also need to build the right dashboards to visualize the data, the right alerting rules to keep track on the health of your collectors. Oh, not this again. The other challenge is related to configuring our collector pipelines. You can do it by defining your pipeline in a text format used by the collector and sometimes complex to properly configure our pipelines or even to debug our pipeline. More than just creating the pipeline, we also need to manage the updates of our pipelines. When updating our pipeline, we need to roll out most of our collectors and load the new configuration to make sure the collector are taking our latest settings. The big challenge is when we start using sidecar collectors, where it is required to roll out the entire application pod to make sure that the sidecar is reading the new configuration. How can we optimize this? Getting the live data of collectors and managing the design and update of our collectors. Well, there is an amazing project called Biplane that relies on an emerging protocol called OPAMP. OPAMP stands for Open Agent Management Protocol. It's a protocol that is built to manage remotely various OPAMP clients. In Open Telemetry, the clients would be the Open Telemetry collectors and of course, all the SDKs that we use in our code. This OPAMP project is part of the Open Telemetry project. As of now, there is one implementation is the Go uh, OPAMP library. So here is the link to the OPAMP Go library. OPAMP is designed to have a central server managing our open telemetry fleet. The server would be able to send configuration and installation package to the various agent deployed in our telemetry fleet. The other advantage is that every agent of our telemetry fleet are able to report their status, health, and more. OPAMP supports remote configuration, status reporting of the agents, telemetry data of the agents like CPU, memory usage, and more, installation and upgrade of the various configurations, connection credentials management where the server can upgrade the credentials of the various agents. Last, secure and auto update. OPAMP is designed in a client-server approach. Each component that needs to be managed by a given server needs to have an OPAMP client installed on the component. The OPAMP client will then be connected to the server using the OPAMP protocol. The OPAMP protocol is currently supporting a couple of protocols. So we have HTTP transport layer, and last, we have WebSocket. Each open client connects to the server will act like an agent. The server will generate one ID per agent managed by the server. The specification of the open protocol describes in details the various type of message that the agent or the server can handle. Here is the link to the specification of the OPAMP protocol. What is interesting is the way the agents are sending the telemetry data. The OPAM client will set up on the agents one OTLP exporter that will push the telemetry data to the server that has, in fact, one OTLP receiver. It means that the telemetry data are exchanged using the official Open Telemetry protocol and not the OPAM protocol. The order of sending the telemetry data will be, of course, initiate using the OPAM protocol, but the transport will be done with the Open Telemetry protocol. So OPAM is there to manage our Open Telemetry fleet. But what is actually the real use case? Well, I see two major use cases. One, our instrumentation SDK. For now, when we use auto instrumentation or manual instrumentation, we have to configure how the data will be sent. The exporter, the batch span processor, the sampler, and more. From the moment your open client will be available in various language of the open telemetry SDK, it would mean that in the future, 
our OPAMP server could adjust on the fly, sampling decisions, exporters, and more on our SDKs. This, that is amazing because we can, at the end of the day, let the sampling decision to our auxiliary backend of our choice. Of course, it will also mean that the auxiliary backend will have to support the OPAMP protocol. The auxiliary solution could then reach to all the various services to adjust the sampling decisions based on a given situation. So if we have a production outage, I'll probably want to have more traces, more logs produced from a given component. The other use case is open telemetry collector. Managing 100 plus collectors is currently a challenge. So having the ability to manage centrally all our collectors by pushing the new version of the collector pipeline in one click is just amazing. By more than just updating our pipeline, being able to get the health and the consumption's details on what is currently happening in our collectors is also great. We can, of course, do it today using various processors, but here it will be done automatically. OPAMP is an initiative that is influenced by several organizations and vendors, including Observe IQ. Remember, Observe IQ is the company that has built Stanza and donated to OpenTelemetry. Observe IQ are currently the first solution providing an OPAMP support. Pipeline OP is an open source solution that utilizes the OPAMP protocol to configure, monitor, deploy our various collectors. As you can imagine, the default OpenTelemetry collector image available in the OpenTelemetry collector contrib repo does not have at the moment the OPAMP client included. So Observe IQ is currently providing a specific distro of the collector. The usage of Biplane will provide the Biplane server that will act like the OPAMP server. Also, will provide a web UI where you can see the various collector, in fact, agents deployed and their status. What is great with the web UI is that it is helping us to design our collector pipeline. You will define your list of receivers and configure them. The flow of processor that you would like to use and where to export your traces, metrics, and so on. It reminds me a bit like Calyptia for FluentD and FluentBit. Biplane can be deployed in Linux, Windows, macOS, and soon in Kubernetes. Biplane also provides a CLI allowing you to deploy your various agents, push a configuration on an agent, and more. Observe IQ will provide soon, probably at the beginning of next year, a managed version of a pipeline. Otherwise, Observe IQ provides also an enterprise version that includes uh, an enterprise support in top of pipeline. So if you're looking for a SaaS version of pipeline, you can check the following websites, observeikey.com. Like mentioned, Bioplans uh, provide a Kubernetes support and it includes a couple of components. So you will have one stateful set to deploy the Bioplans server, a daemon set with the open telemetry Observe IQ distro. That includes the open client. To collect the various collectors considered as agents to the Bioplans server, you will need to add the Observe IQ WebSocket URL as, and the Bioplans secret key the OPAMP secret key that corresponds to the biplane configuration secret key. The UI is structured in three distinct sections. The overview showing all the configurations that you have created. So configuration will be a pipeline. Uh, the agents listing all the agents registered in biplanes and configs shows you all the configuration created. So all the receivers and exporters. Creating a configuration requires to precise the OS of the agents. Could be Mac, Linux, or Windows. Then you select the source, the receiver of the collector, and the destination of your signals, so the exporters. Once the receivers and the exporters define, you will need to deploy to an existing agent. Once the configuration is loaded, you will see the traffic in the UI.
To add new processors, you will simply need to click on one of the boxes. So it could be Prometheus if it's a, it's a one of your receiver or open telemetry or Dynatrace exporters uh, to add your exporters. All the various lists of receivers, uh, destinations, processors that you, need, you can use to build your pipelines are, can be configurable with the help of a file defined in biplane. So here is the link to uh, the various lists of receiver, uh, processors and source that are currently deployed in biplane. Each file describes the various parameters that will be used for the receivers, processors or exporters. Therefore, you can easily add a new custom receiver or exporter or processor in biplane. For example, if I want to add a dedicated destination for Danatrace Open Telemetry Tracing Jest API, I could create a configuration file describing the various parameters required. So Danatrace utilizes the Open Telemetry HTTP protocol and it requires to use the, a token to send the data. So at the end, we can imagine to create one uh, receiver having two parameters, so the URL to the Tracing Jest API of Dynatrace uh, and the API token uh, for to ingest our traces. So here is an example, for example, of a destination uh, type for Dynatrace. In this example, we also define the type of signal supported and how to replace the current definition in the collector pipeline. So here is a uh, uh, details on, you can see it's using traces and you can see that it's using like a ham shards variable to replace in the co open telemetry collector pipeline. Last, you can add a default processor that your exporter will use uh, when you deploy it in pipeline. For example, here we are adding the batch processor by default. Then to upgrade pipeline with the new configuration, you will need to use the pipeline CLI. Similar to kubectl, once the CLI is installed, you will need to create a profile that will allow us to match the connections with one of your pipeline server. Once connected, you can apply the new configuration. Biplane apply and the configuration box. If Biplane doesn't have uh, the right receiver, or exporter or processor, there is a custom options for destination, source and processors where you select that type of destination source or processors and you will basically be able to type directly the, the code of the related step pipeline step. In order to get more details related to biplane, let's call the CEO of Observe IQ, Mike Kelly. Hi Mike, how are you? Uh, great, it's great to see you again. Me too. I mean, since KubeCon, lots of things have been happening in my end. I guess you're also running everything. Yeah, yeah, it's a busy time, right? But, um, but uh, yeah, exciting to, to talk to you again. I always, uh, always enjoy it. I'm currently presenting an episode related to OPAMP and Biplane. I have briefly explained what is the OPAMP protocol and what is Biplane, the value that Biplane offers to the community. I have several questions related to the project, but before we jump to those questions, could you briefly introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Mike Kelly. I'm the CEO at Observe IQ, and um, I've been focused on observability space for over 10 years now, um, actually going on about 15, uh, with a specific focus for me on the telemetry side of it. So the agents, the integrations, and the observability pipeline component of that. So how to, to gather, process, and transmit data which is, you know, continues to be a, a challenge and is, is getting more and more challenging as, as the data volumes grow. Um, and at Observe IQ, that's been our focus. We've been dedicated to open source observability solutions specifically. Uh, we do a lot of work in the open telemetry community and, uh, and on biplane, which we're going to talk about today. Every project has a story. What motivates you to build a solution like biplane? Yeah, no, great question. Um, you know, like I said, we've been focused on telemetry for, for years now. And one of the challenges is um, as you're, you're finding ways to ingest logs, metrics, traces, and other signals from uh, massive environments, you know, that's not a trivial trivial task. 
And um, it, it's not enough to simply have agents for each platform that you're supporting. Um, and, and more recently, people have realized that there's a need for a, a management layer on top of that on gathering telemetry. And, and that's where this uh, idea of observability pipelines comes from. And maybe more accurately, observability pipeline manager even. So what we've seen is as, as um, data volumes continue to grow, as uh, you know, we see environments in this kind of continue to sprawl, there's this need to centralize the way that you manage both the agents that you're deploying, the configuration, the life cycle of those agents when you have tens of thousands of systems, and also the flow of data. So that means uh, centralizing the ability to filter that data flow, to reroute it to different uh, solutions or analytics layers and reduce the data so that you're not sending redundant or unnecessary data. Um, and so that was something that's, you know, we, we recognized as a need for our customers. It really didn't exist in the, the um, open source world, certainly not with, within the open telemetry uh, community. And we think that, you know, open telemetry is really where things are headed. Uh, we believe in that as, as the, the future. And so I wanted to provide this as a, a solution to use open telemetry, instrument everything one time, and then use this uh, to, to manage your agents and the, the data stream. Why did you name the solution Biplane? What is the story behind the name? Yeah, so we've we've had a, a buying plane product for, for many years, actually. Um, initially, it was focused on just the configuration and, and management, the full lifecycle management of agents. Um, with buying plane OP, it really it adds on additional components of uh, layering on some filtering capabilities, uh, uh, focus on open telemetry. But the name itself uh, came around from, you know, we're really trying to to find a way to link these layers, to, to, to bind it from one uh, from the, the um, ingestion point, the point where you're gathering those signals, and then to the, the analytics layers and have something in between. Um, and and that's, that's where the name came from. It was you know, really this idea of, of linking these two together, but we're putting something in between that didn't exist before. I guess Observer IQ are the first company designing the ancestor of the open protocol. Are you the one suggested this protocol? or was it a collaboration with several companies? There were several companies that were interested in it. Um, and, and I don't know that we were the ones to, to bring it up, but um, I think it's a really a brilliant idea because, you know, in the past, as I mentioned, we've been building pipelines for quite some time and it's always been a proprietary protocol. So if you want to manage an agent, you figure it out on your own. And every vendor, maybe not every vendor, but every vendor that wants to have um, real-time management of agents, develops their own proprietary uh, uh, protocol. And so you have these conflicting protocols. And and um, what's really great about the open telemetry community and team is you have people that have been doing this for a long time that are very you know, smart. They've, they've seen all the pitfalls. And so coming together and collaborating, you can really um, learn from each other's mistakes, um, but also the things that have gone well. So when it came up and it was proposed, um, it was something that we, we very quickly got involved in and um, I, I think what we ended up with in the, the open agent management protocol is something that you know it's not just for open telemetry it's really for for any uh, agent that, that wants to implement this um, and I think it makes a lot of sense uh, for this to be a standard going forward so I'm excited about this and seeing where it's going to, to end up. Do you have any news or product updates to share with our community? Yeah so we're, we're adding features very rapidly um, and, and expanding what we're we're doing. In the, the latest releases, um, we've added some topology views, the ability to, to visualize data as it flows is really one of the primary goals here is to be able to make it really simple for the user to uh, reduce and filter the data and then visualize that. Because if you don't have that feedback loop, it can be really, really tough to, to do this, at, especially at scale. Um, so these new releases make it uh, really simple to say, Where's that data going? Let's change the direction. Um, you know, if you have a security use cases, um, you can, but also compliance needs, for example, you can filter filter the data out. So you're only sending security data to that platform. And then you're maybe sending everything off to low cost storage. Um, so what you're seeing as we, you know, um, as we continue to, to put out releases is a big focus on, on making the, the filtering reduction use case and routing use case as simple as possible. Um, there are additional functionality like uh, PII uh, filtering that's going to be baked into the product. So for, for companies that are focused on professional or uh, personal information and eliminating that, you can do that at the edge or as it flows through your system. 
Um, and we released an enterprise version so that there's a there's a supported version if companies are interested in using you know the open uh, open source tool but want something that that has backing of a company needed to be supported that's available with some additional functionality like authentication uh, options um, some additional high availability versions and, and other features for those enterprise customers the current version of biplanes require to use the collector distro of observer IQ. Do you know if there is a plan to add the OPM client in the collector country? Yeah, there's been um, a good discussion. It actually uh, um, kind of accelerated when we were at, at KubeCon a few weeks ago, and it was around including that in the default distribution. Uh, I expect that to get merged in. It can take a little bit of time. I think that there's some, um, it may be a, a couple more months, but I do expect to have the client as a component of uh, the, the mainline and by default. Um, but it is also, you know, it's something that can be uh, um, uh, built in by uh, a customer. And one of the one of the ways that uh, folks use, customers use open telemetry is they'll, they'll build their own version of the collector um, and can pull in exactly what they need for that. That's a fairly straightforward process. So, you know, we have our, our, our version or our distro um, that's, uh, supported we love it if folks use it um, we expect the protocol to end up in in the main line along with a lot of the other functionality that we're including right now um, so you have options uh, right now uh, today though you know, the open or the observe iq distro is the one that's supported by bind plane and then we we hope to expand that to other distros uh, as op amp uh, continues to gain traction I'm a big fan of the open telemetry operator that manage the deployments of the collectors. I usually combine sidecar collectors to do local transformation and then add daemon set collector to do final transformation. So I'm chaining collectors to build collector pipelines with several steps. Currently, the usage of collector in a sidecar container are great, but the update of the pipeline requires to restart the application pod. And that is very painful. Are there any plans to add the support of pipelines in the operator? Yeah, so that is something that we've, we've heard multiple uh, customers asking for. And I, I think that it makes just a, a ton of sense. And that's one of the big use cases that we're focused on is uh, Kubernetes. And, and um, so, yes, it's on, it's on a roadmap. Um, I would expect it. Um, some of the, er, the, the first, I think, iterations of that to, to be coming out early next year. So in a couple months from now, probably we'll see some some additional functionality. And that's you know that's pr the primary uh, driver behind it. You know you can you, whether you're doing that with with sidecars and operators or with uh, the the collectors and streaming them through aggregator nodes. That's that's really the, the design. What we want to allow, uh, regardless of how you're doing that specifically, is to go from um, to build your stream of data and then at each point. It's managed at each point, whether it's at the edge or there's an aggregator in between uh, to build out the, the, uh, the full pipeline. We mainly touched the collector configuration with the OPAM protocol, but it seems we can do more. Do you know if the Open Telemetry project will add soon the OPAM client to the various SDK? So we also will be able to configure the instrumentation library. For example, if I instrument a Java application, I'll probably have defined a specific spam processor, a sampler. So similar to the configuration of the collector, it would be great to be able to change on the fly the type of sampler used by the application. Do you think this feature will be available in the next coming month? Yeah, I think it'll be further than a, than a month, but it is that is definitely a focus. So where we started was with, um, you know, I think one of the biggest challenges we've, we've seen is with logs specifically, or just, just there's, there's so much log data. And so we started with, with that piece. Uh, in addition, metrics is a big component of that. But trace is, is supported right now. But what you're what you what you're you're calling out, and I think it's the right thing, is you also want the ability to to um, uh, uh, config on or change configuration on the fly of running applications using the OpenAMP protocol. And I see that as a, a core use case that we're moving toward as well. Really, what we want um, to see Bindplane uh, uh, solve is is the um, filtering. Um, control at every level for all all telemetry signals, and certainly traces are a piece of that. Uh, so it's another one that that's um, uh, it's a big focus of ours for our roadmap. I think that one's going to come. Uh, it would be a little bit later, probably not in a month, but um, but we're moving quickly. So you'll be the you'll be one of the first to know 
uh, when that one's ready. I'd love to get your feedback on it too. Building collector pipeline could be quite difficult, especially if we need to adjust the telemetry data by dropping labels or renaming metrics or convert the value of a given metric. When we build pipeline as of now, we need to use logging exporters and look at the logs of our collector to see if the processor is doing what is expected. I recently discovered that the community is working on a collector UI that would allow us to attach listener to a specific step of our pipeline. We will be able to see incoming telemetry data of a given processor and look at the output of the processor and easily validate the configuration. Do you think that pipeline will offer in the future the ability to debug our pipeline? Where we can look at in details the incoming and outgoing data of a specific step of our collector pipeline. It would just be amazing feature helping us to design a robust and reliable pipeline. Absolutely. And this is um, this is actually an interesting topic. And it's uh, if you think about how this is done, right, you, you need the ability to look into a collector and say at each step along the way, uh, what's what's happening. Um, and and a, so right now with with buying plane, you can go in and, and gather the last bit of uh, telemetry data that's flowing through. So you can you know, click a button on any agent and it'll pull up the, the latest hundred last hundred lines of logs, some metrics, any traces that are flowing through. That's coming from one point. Um, and what you're describing, I think, is 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 really where we where we want to go, which is you want to be able to see that as it passes through, because that feedback is what lets you develop something really quickly, confirm that everything's working properly, and also you want to be able to simulate it too. You want to maybe not just use live data, but say I'm going to paste in this this snippet of OTLP, and now I want to confirm that my um, the processor is doing what I expect it to do. So that's a big that that's a big focus of ours right now. It's something that we're we're working on designing to to improve the the level of granularity where you can see that right now you can see it at one point but it's very similar to what we are actually are doing uh, when you're in the product and you look at the measurements so today what we do with a collector pipe or with a um, um the pipeline inside of a collector is we take multiple measurements of how much data is passing through and we do that at a source ingestion we'll do it after each processor We'll do it before a destination. It's a, it's really exactly what you're describing, uh, but we're adding on to that to show not just the amount of data that's flowing through, but also some of the specific data. And when you can pull that back, we can do everything that you're describing, which is show some uh, show the data pre-processor, show the data post-processor, and allow the user to get the, the feedback that they need to to um, iterate on that quickly. That's fantastic. Biopoint will offer a testing feature for our pipeline. And also we can imagine to create SLI and SLO based on the data of our pipeline. How can the community reach out to ObserveIQ and Pipeline? Yeah, so I, I think the best place to reach out to us is uh, either at ObserveIQ.com. Uh, you can find information on um, the open source work that we're doing, um, also on the enterprise versions. But we have a, a Slack community that you can join. And I think that's a great place you can reach out to uh, directly to me or to, to engineers on the team and everyone's happy to, to, to help out and to um, look for feedback because right now like I said we're we're, we're moving quickly want to hear what people think and, and just get folks trying the product thanks a lot Mike for your time I'm very eager to see the future features of pipeline so see you soon bye thanks a lot great to talk to you In this tutorial, we will deploy biplane and the biplane collector and we'll create a new destination type using the CLI. We will configure a new collector pipeline using the biplane UI. In this tutorial, we will receive traces and metrics from the open telemetry protocol and also we use Prometheus. We will export the generated traces and metrics to Danatrace. For this, in this tutorial, we'll need to have, of course, a Kubernetes cluster, the Prometheus operator, the cert manager, the open telemetry operator, a Danatrace tenant, a version of the online boutique fully instrumented by the open telemetry community, the open telemetry demo. We will use KubeCost. KubeCost will be used only to collect data from KubeCost in Prometheus. Of course, we will deploy Biplane, the Biplane CLI, and ObserveIQ Collector Distro. 
In this demo, like mentioned, we will try to create a new destination type in biplane using the CLI, configure the collector pipeline, deploy the configuration to the agents, to the collectors, and then look at the data ingested in Dynatrace. Like every tutorial that we deliver at Is It Observable, there is always a GitHub repository related to the episode. And here we're looking at the episode of Pipeline and OPM. So similar to the other episode, you need a couple of requirements. We'd already described them one by one. What I would suggest, there are a few things that we're gonna go through in terms of requirement. And then uh, uh, you, there is a, a, a deployment script, as you can see here. Uh, so you can run that script, most of the uh, requirement will be deployed and then I will let you go through the configuration of KubeCost, everything is well described and uh, and also deploy, uh, deploy uh, the test step number six where you deploy, deploy a pipeline and then we will uh, go for the, on the next steps uh, on connecting uh, all the various uh, signals and everything together. So first, uh, because we require uh, a Dynatrace tenant. If you don't have any Dynatrace tenant, no worries. Uh, you can still uh, launch a trial with this link. It will bring you to this page here where you can put your email address and you will receive uh, a tenant uh, where you can do this uh, tutorial uh, with Dynatrace. Once you have a tenant, one thing that you have to do, a couple of things. So first, keep the URL of your Dynatrace tenant. You will need it later, um, especially when we're going to configure uh, the collector pipelines in biplane uh, in the web UI of biplane. So make sure to have that URL uh, stored somewhere. You can still copy and paste it later, but you need to have it at least later on. Then uh, the other thing which is important is that because we're going to send traces uh, and metrics to Dana Trace with the help of biplane, you need an access token. So we've done it in several episodes for those who's following. Uh, but uh, what is required here, we can create a, like I say, biplane, I say biplane token. And uh, I will search for ingest because the scope that we need is at metrics at least uh, and open telemetry traces. So those are the two one that we need. Um, we could, if uh, we were logs were officially supported, we could extend to logs, but at least those two uh, scope would be required. So once you have generated the token, you do you, you generate the token. You have the value here. You can copy it. Uh, keep make sure to have uh, it saved because you will need it, of course, later uh, once we uh, uh, start the official uh, tutorial, the configuration of your collector. What do you get out of this deployment? So let's have a look at this. So first, couple of things that you need. So if you open your a terminal. Let's have a look at the namespace that would be available in your cluster. So first, in this cluster, you should have a couple of namespaces. So uh, the one related to uh, the technical namespace, so we could name it like this. So the ingress, the nginx for your ingress controller, uh, the open telemetry operator systems for the to the open telemetry operator uh, that is deployed in this cluster, and the cert manager. So those are the three uh, custom a technical namespace. Uh, I have uh, here cube cost available as well uh, in the dedicated namespace. Uh, in the default namespace, we will have uh, every component related to Prometheus and of course pipeline for pipeline. So uh, let's have a look at the first uh, the uh, pods running in the default namespace. As you can see, we will have the Prometheus stack. So Prometheus, uh, the node exporter, kubeset metrics, and Grafana. This has been deployed because um, uh, KubeCost uh, requires it uh, to be able to uh, to fully uh, get the cost of the cluster. I have customized the deployment. Of course, you could have deployed KubeCost uh, with the default exporters, but I've decided to do it with uh, with uh, also the, the, the Prometheus operator. Now, uh, if you look at the uh, pods running in you will have uh, one pod that has two containers, the cube cost analyzer. Um, and you will see that there's an ingress rule as well uh, that has been created. Uh, and also, if you look at now the pods running uh, the biplane web UI server, the main component with the OPM server. And we have here uh, the, the observe IQ open telemetry uh, distro collector. So what do you have in terms of ingress? So first, 
you will have one ingress rule for Grafana. Uh, it's not super required because you're not going to use it. But like I said, uh, cube cost requires uh, Grafana uh, and Prometheus. So that's why it's been it's uh, deployed in this cluster. Then there's an ingress rule for uh, cube cost. So here we have the UI of cube cost. Um, and uh, last, of course, we have the biplane. Uh, biplane uh, UI. So here I'm already connected uh, with the, the, the passwords that uh, you have created. So in the step, just to remind you, here you define your own password and that will be stored in a secret uh, used by uh, the biplane server. Uh, and of course, this, uh, th those tokens, you can change it, but those are used to, in, to, uh, to configure the connection between the uh, collectors and the biplane UI. In, uh, we will deploy the uh, hotel demo applications. Uh, so that's why we create the hotel demo namespace. And um, the, this demo will use an open telemetry sidecar con collector pipeline. So here I'm not using pipeline to do this. So I'm doing a very basic one uh, as of now because pipeline not supports the operator. So, but here, let me show uh, the sidecar uh, pipeline, which is basically uh, collecting locally uh, the metrics and traces and it will basically export it directly to uh, the Observe IQ hotel collector uh, uh, deployed as a daemon set. Uh, so here I'm referring to that services. So that will be the main thing. So that's why we deploy first pipeline to make sure that this service is listening. Uh, so then we could, uh, we could then uh, receive the traces and metrics and uh, create the right pipeline. So let's deploy briefly the application. All right, let's create the M space. Then we are going to deploy the uh, open telemetry collector uh, object. So uh, once it's been created, then uh, we uh, the deployment of the app itself, uh, they will refer to uh, the sidecar and that will deploy everything. So now if I press enter, it will create all the various uh, deployment services uh, and uh, ingress roles uh, for these specific applications. And if we pay attention to the pods running in this namespace, you'll see that we have two containers that are currently running. Uh, that will be deployed in my case, uh, one for the app and one for the open telemetry uh, collector pipeline. To uh, deploy the new configuration file, destination file, we need to deploy the pipeline CLI. So here is the link to the documentation of the pipeline CLI. Uh, so please uh, deploy uh, the CLI in uh, Linux or Windows or Mac OS. In my case, I've deployed it on my Windows machine. So once the pipeline CLI is installed, you have to create a profile. So with a with a pipeline CLI, so you will have to say bind plain CTL profile. And then you set a name to that, so we can say Observe IQ, Observe IQ tutorial, tutorial. And then we pass our username, so we don't create any username yet, yet but here I'm going to use a default one, default one called admin. And then you pass your password. In my case, and then you pass your server. And we enter. So now we, the biplane profile is created. So now we can say biplane CTL profile get. Now it's, it shows us the current profile biplane uh, use a profile. Use and then you no know, case it's observe IQ. Tutorial. And uh, like they explain in the episode, there is plenty of different uh, destination type and, and source type and, and other type of configuration defined uh, in biplane. But uh, here, what I wanted to do is to define a new destination type for Dynatrace. So Dynatrace used the OTLP. But so uh, what I'm going to do is pre-configure a few options related to uh, to the Dynatrace exporter um, in the Open Terminal Collector. So I said it's a Dynatrace OTLP HTTP. Uh, I saw that there's a reference to Dynatrace 
uh, uh, icon in biplanes. I'm doing a reference to it. And then I precise the parameter that I need. So I need uh, the endpoint, so uh, with the HTTPS. Um, and then I use uh, the API token. So uh, I, set, I precise it as a token, it's a string. Uh, I think you can, and then I, I'm referring here to uh, the documentation if we need to, to know a bit more about uh, how to create that token. And last, as you can see uh, in the uh, sp section here, this is basically similar to a Helm. It will replace the various variables that we've defined. So here it will replace uh, in the definition of the exporter HTTP, uh, the, uh, the endpoint that we've defined for Dynatrace. I will put here slash and the API. So here it allows me to do the HTTPS of our Dynatrace tenant. And then I'm putting slash API v2 OTLP to be able to export it to OTLP. And then of course I'm pushing my API token here. So outside of that, I'm adding a processor and uh, with here a batch. And then we apply this one. So we have just a warning saying that the SVG is not included, but it's been created. So you can see that the destination type is created. So once our configuration is being created, we can, uh, destination type is being created, then we can just simply connect to biplane. So your password. And as you can see, the first thing we can see is uh, we deployed our agents and they are automatically connected. So we can see them. So as of now, there is no configuration deployed. Uh, we just see that it's a Linux uh, agent and that's it. So that's for the, the, the first thing that you see is the, the, the agents currently. Uh, so you can add new installation if you need it. But here we already have the other one that has been registered automatically to the biplane server. So if you go to overview, then there is no uh, a configuration yet, so we can create a new configuration. So let's do, let's say, biplane tutorial. And here we saw it's a Linux, so we're going to select Linux. And uh, then we can provide, may, of course, the description. And now we're going to add two sources. So we're going to use receive open telemetry logs, uh, metrics and traces. So we're going to select this one. And it's going to be the default port, so we're not going to configure them, uh, not to adjust the configuration, that's fine for us. And the second source that we're going to use is Prometheus. So this for the metrics, because we're going to try to, to scrap uh, the metrics from our um, our KubeCost uh, uh, server. Uh, and how do you get this one? So if you go to your, if you go to the pods, of the S services, as you can see, we are, there is a port 9903. That will be the default one. So we're just going to get this one. Oh, let's do it again. So Prometheus. And here we're going to put the target. In my case, my target is this one sitting in, uh, because they are in the same Kubernetes cluster, of course, it works, or otherwise you won't be working. So it's sitting in the cube cost namespace and then uh, it's uh, an SVC and the port is oh sorry 993 and then uh, the job name will call it cube cost of course you can add more endpoints if needed so you can add a list and for us we're going to use just uh, this one just to illustrate uh, the ingestions of metrics at advanced, uh, we can see here it's going to collect every 60 seconds. Let's uh, do it to every 10 seconds. Uh, and then we're going to save. So now we have our two sources defined. The next is define, defining the destinations. So as you can see now, uh, first we're going to use the metric uh, metric Dynatrace uh, plugin that is available in Biplane. So we can name it Dynatrace. And then I need to precise here the Dynatrace ingest API. So I'm going to grab my URL of my tenant. And then uh, side of that, I need to have the full URL uh, to my uh, to the API uh, metric ingest API. Then remember, you have a token that you have created. This is where you're going to use the token that you have created. In advanced, uh, I'm going to use a prefix here. 
uh, so the resource attributes metrics to uh, prepend to the metrics we can say yet here bind plane uh, and we're gonna say so now the metrics has been defined uh, we can add another one so here it's the first one but we can add another destination but you can do it later on don't worry here I can add I can see that we're receiving two signals here it's going down a trace it's gonna be mainly for metrics you can see that traces is there's no there's no um, uh, exporter for traces uh, because the Dynatrace metrics is only for metrics. So I'm going to use another destinations. And normally, if we type OTLP, you can see that the one we just created is available. And it's covering only traces because we specialized it with only traces. And then, same thing, I need my URL. But here, remember, without the slash, because we already added the, the right stuff. And then we're going to add the token, token here again and save. So now we have these settings here configured. Uh, we, we don't have added any processors, but we can do it later on. So first, what I'm going to do is here say I'm going to add some agents. So I'm going to select the agents that I want and apply. So now they've been connected and they have it. They, they currently have the, the data uh, that, uh, that, that we need. So if we click on one of the agents now, uh, we can see that it's using the configuration that we use, and then we can see the raw, uh, the, the actual pipeline that we've defined uh, with the, everything. So the receivers, uh, you can see that show more. So we can see that we have the the, uh, the pipeline that, that has been generated is here. So we can see everything, the trace pipeline. And you can see as it, what's is interesting is that also, um, I like discussing the OPAM protocol, it's using also uh, an, an OTLP to push the metrics generated by, 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 uh, by the the OPAMP protocol, so it's doing what it expected. So now, if you go back to topology, you can see that. What is interesting is you can see view recent telemetry. So let's have a look at the recent telemetry. If you click on traces, oh, we can see that we already have some traces generated. So we have HTTP GET, and we can see the detail. So the the all the things that, uh, that traces produced in the environment, we can see them, we can see uh, all the various details. We can, so we are quite confident on this. On the metrics, uh, we have a. It, it seems to not work, but we will should should be able to do the same thing uh, with the metrics as well. So if we go back to overview here, we can see that uh, uh, we have one configuration defined yet with uh, four agents, uh, and we can go back to that configurations, and we can see it's sending at the moment uh, eight point six uh, megabyte per, uh, per minute on Dynatrace metrics, and if we go to traces, we can see that we have more more traffic going to uh, to the traces as of now. So it's very interesting. You can do uh, the follow all the, the monitoring of your, your uh, of your pipelines. So if you go back now to our pipeline, so my plan tutorial, let's say that we want to use uh, here the a new one. So uh, you can see there is a couple of uh, logs. So we can say delete or add resource or uh, if there is a one metric name filter, so we can filter some logs. So there is a couple, a couple of the predefined uh, um, uh, processors added, but here we can see custom. And we're going to say that's going to be for metric and traces. And here I'm adding this, uh, oh, this Kubernetes attribute processor. So, so now we have this and I save it and I save this one. So I have now a processor that has been used. You can see uh, it's using it. And I could do the same here. If I want to add a, an extra processor for that pipeline, I can do it I can do custom and I will be able to do the same thing. And as you can see now we have two processors going on, uh, one for metrics and one for traces. Uh, and then I can also see the raw to see uh, how the, the, the pipeline looks like. So now that we have everything running now, it seems that it's sending the data to Dynatrace. So if I go to Dynatrace, I could, first of all, go to distributed tracings. And if I go to ingest traces, I should see now uh, the traces that we are generating. Uh, so we can see that we have add product here for the front end. So let's have a look at this one. So it's now, it's our cluster so it's a biplane so we can see that it's already sending so as you can see we, we didn't define a pipeline it, we we let biplane define the pipeline for us using the ui so it was very easy and convenient to do that to do so and the same thing now for the metrics because we have metrics coming in and i think we name it by plane as a suffix 
Oh, and now we can see that we have the cube cost. So here it's, you can see it's grabbing the cube cost metrics. That's it for today's uh, episode related to the OPAMP protocol and pipeline. As you can see, the OPAMP protocol will provide lots of great features that will allow us to manage easily all the various open telemetry components, the SDK, and of course, the collectors. Biplane is the first solution utilizing the OPAMP protocol. As you can see, Biplane provides lots of features that makes our life much more easier to manage the agents and to configure our pipelines. Of course, with the discussion that we had with Mike, as you can see, in the next coming month, lots of great features have been planned. So I think if we are a bit patient, we will have lots of great things that we can manage with our open terminal collectors and probably the SDKs. If you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. So see you soon for another episode. Bye.